When a baby has a tongue or lip tie released, your care provider will have you complete stretches and exercises to help with the healing process. Although every baby heals differently, they all follow in general the same healing steps. A new frenulum will form where the old one was released. We expect that. We want this new frenulum to be as long and flexible as possible to allow for full range of motion of the tongue and lip and to help prevent another surgery from needing to be repeated. When the tongue and lip are released, there will be a white diamond shaped wound. Healing is occurring underneath of that diamond. We want the diamond will look like this and we want that diamond to the sides to meet so that the tongue is free and not top to bottom where the tongue will reattach. So we're trying to get the diamond to collapse side to side instead of from top to bottom. This will prevent the tongue from reattaching or the frenulum from regrowing too short and too restricted. There is currently no standardization of how to complete the stretches, how many times a day, or for how many days or weeks to complete them. We do know that everybody's body heals differently and at a different rate. In general, most providers will have you complete these stretches every four to five hours during the day with one possible six hour sleep stretch at night. In my experience, babies who have good strength and coordination of the tongue prior to release tend to need the stretches less often and for a shorter amount of time than those who have a weak suck and poor coordination. If the baby is sleeping with the tongue resting up on the roof of the mouth instead of low on the floor of the mouth, those babies also tend to do better with less of a risk of reattachment. If you notice your baby is mouth breathing while sleeping, you'll want to make sure to perform the sleeping tongue posture hold to train the tongue to rest up with the mouth closed. This can help prevent reattachment. So mouth breathing with a low tongue resting posture is a red flag that you may need to do those stretches and exercises more often and for longer to help prevent reattachment. Some babies, will need pain relief longer than others, depending on their pain threshold. Some only appear bothered for the length of time that you have their fingers in their mouth and then are happy to go about your day as soon as those fingers are out. In the following videos, I will show you how I teach the families that I work with how to do the post-procedure stretches. Keep in mind that these may be different than how you were taught by your provider and that is okay. You can complete these exercises with clean, washed hands, but many find using gloves can make it much easier to do the stretches as the gloves can slide a little bit easier. Some also find using a little bit of coconut oil helps keep the fingers from sticking. If you have any concerns about how to complete the stretches or how your wound is healing for your baby, please make sure to schedule a follow-up with your original release provider, the person who did the original clip um, or laser release of your baby. When completing the exercises, you'll want to make sure baby is on a flat surface such as a bed, couch, or changing table. Slightly extend baby's head can help you open their jaw wider and make it easier for fingers to come under the tongue. Brace your middle fingers on the jaw and be mindful to either have your thumbs on baby's forehead or keep them out of the way. Take your index fingers and scoop under the tongue and press up and back along the sides of the diamond. Hold the tongue up for three to five seconds. Some providers will have you pulse up and back several times. Then roll your finger on the diamond and press up and back firmly for five seconds. Some providers will have you use a rolling pin action on the diamond, which in effect does the same thing.